I grew up in Minneapolis, so I grew up in the deciduous forest. And as a kid, I climbed trees. I lived in the trees like a monkey. I climbed the elms, the oaks. Uh, so I feel close, you know, really close to uh, the deciduous forest. When I was 15, I took a motorboat down the Mississippi River. I, I went I recruited my older brother, Tom, was 17. We went from Minneapolis to New Orleans. I was curious about the south and the people and the river and, and all these adventures that Huck had. And, and I understand the, the river, the south, the people, the floods that are going on now. I, I have an innate understanding of that and, and because of that expedition. The Mississippi River is an important feature of Minnesota's deciduous forest. However, this biome has many other characteristics that define it. Walking in these woods this morning and hearing the birds, it's just, it all comes back as to why you're doing this in the first place and why you're interested. Well, I can remember sitting, actually lying on our backs in a deciduous forest along the shores of Lake Michigan, probably 25 years ago now, and it was one of those beautiful spring days that was really the height of the warbler migration. And we just sat there for probably several hours and watched this incredible, colorful array of warblers coming through the woods. And we never had to move, and we counted, I think, upwards of 25 species in this one huge sugar maple tree that was above us. The fact that Lee Van Mueller's passion for birds has led to a deep appreciation of the deciduous forest is no accident. The forest's exceptional diversity has helped put Minnesota on the map as having one of the highest concentrations of breeding bird populations in North America. In Minnesota in particular, the eastern deciduous forest is what we call transitional forest between what was formerly the prairie grasslands in western and southern Minnesota and the more boreal forest in extreme northeastern Minnesota. What happened over the years is a lot of those forests and prairies were converted for different reasons. And what we're seeing today is some dramatic changes in the eastern deciduous forest, um, largely because of agricultural development and urban development. The growth of the Twin Cities has had a profound impact on the towering shady forests of maple and basswoods that were once known as the Big Woods. There are very few sites like this. And when you look at the whole Big Woods ecosystem and realize how much of that we've lost, which is almost 99% of it, the importance of this site even elevates higher because there just are very few sites. The Big Woods ecosystem used to cover about 3,400 square miles. And what we have left today is just over a couple thousand acres at best in this part of kind of east central, south central Minnesota. So it's a, it's a rare entity indeed. The forests that do remain are becoming more isolated from other forest tracks. And once you decrease the size and you increase the isolation of those forest tracks, you have a profound impact on the species and the natural systems within those woodlots. Declining bird populations in fragmented forests result in more insects eating the leaves of the remaining trees, and these become less healthy. Also, fragmentation from development allows easier access for non-native species of plants that can disturb the forest ecosystem. Dr. Sue Galatowicz studies Minnesota's fragmented landscapes in her work restoring ecosystems. She is interested in how these landscapes will respond to climate change. A few years ago, we began to wonder, uh, so if we were going to be restoring ecosystems now that would be able to sort of, uh, sort of last into the future, uh, what kinds of conditions are those new ecosystems going to face? And so, uh, my colleagues and I decided to, uh, you know, figure out just how much uh, the temperature would change, how much the precipitation would change. And we had assumed that somebody had already figured that out. And so we went hunting for that information and learned that nobody had made those projections. And so with the help of some other colleagues, um, we did uh, what were the first climate change projections for Minnesota and learned that across Minnesota, um, at least one plausible scenario is that we might experience about uh, three degrees 
centigrade rise in the next 30 years and, uh, and maybe not too much of a change in precipitation. But that's a really big change when it comes to water because Minnesota is right at the balance of where precipitation just about equals evaporation. And so we've been a state that's been a little more wet than dry, and that's likely going to change in the future. In fact, we might only have about a quarter to one-third of the water that we have had in the past to fill our lakes and wetlands. And so we're going to be a considerably drier place potentially with those warmer temperatures and no additional precipitation. The other thing we learned, too, is that we could see some pretty big shifts in where forests are in Minnesota. So, you know, we're expecting to have a lot less of a forested Minnesota in the future and a lot more prairie. But it's not necessarily going to be prairie because, remember, we have a lot of farmland where that prairie was. So what happens when those trees are uh, sort of destroyed in a storm and can't regenerate anymore? What comes in in their sort of in the aftermath of that? That event. Uh, it's not going to necessarily be prairie because there's not very much prairie left. So what comes in? Really a lot of weeds. And so what we could be seeing is a very weedy future in Minnesota unless we take some steps to actually try to figure out how to make that transition happen. It was in Minnesota's deciduous forest that Will Steger began his career as an educator and explorer. He has since inspired youth around the world to be leaders on climate change solutions. Young people are very important because they are our future. I see a lot of young people that climate is their, their issue. You know, they're, uh, and a lot of them are very upbeat about you know, making some changes. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I think these young students can really set, set the example.